Okay, so before we start, let me tell you what we are going to do in this tutorial. Let's assume in a small or a medium sized business environment, there are three servers in the company. One is a remote desktop server, second is a FTP server and third is a web server. All three servers are hosted locally inside the company premises on the local LAN that is a local area network. Company has one public IP address as you can see over here that is 59.177.177.199. All three servers have been assigned different local IP addresses which I am going to show you in a moment. Now company wants to give specific access to their servers for external users which are not in the company LAN. Now one by one we are going to go on each of the servers and check what public IP and private IP is assigned to that server and also we are going to look at the firewall and the services which are configured. Okay so without wasting any more time let's start our tutorial. Just hold on for a moment. Okay. Okay so we are on server 1. Let's check out the IP address of this server. Let's click on Ethernet details and here you can see the IP address which is 192.168.1.100. Let's click close close and also close this one. Now let's open Internet Explorer and check it out what is the external IP address for this server. Let me type down GWGEL Google okay and let's type what is my IP okay hit enter and as you can see 59.177.177.119 close this and now let's now go to computer right click on the computer and here you will see properties remote desktop setting as you can see it is enabled and network level authentication is selected you can add other users if you want let's click on cancel apply and ok basically i have configured simple remote desktop sharing if you want multiple users to connect to the remote desktop you should enable remote desktop services now let's check it out the firewall click on advanced setting go to inbound rule and let's check it out the rule for remote desktop. Basically I have disabled the rule so that I can show you where we can enable the remote desktop ports. So here is the ports for remote desktop. Let's select both of this. Here you can see the port number which is 3389. So I have selected both of this and I am going to click on enable rule. Now you can see both of these rules are green close this and also close this one. Now let's go to our another server. It is an FTP server. So just hold on for a moment. Okay. So without wasting any more time, let's open network and sharing center. Here click on Ethernet. Details. As you can see the IP address 192.168.1.101 and the gateway. Basically there is two gateways. One which we are using is 192.168.1.1 so let's close this and also close this one once again let's open internet explorer type down google hit enter here type what is my ip okay as you can see 59.177.177.119 let's close this and now let's go to server manager tools internet information service and just click on it okay expand the server node here you will find default FTP okay so let's click on FTP authentication module as you can see basic authentication is enabled and anonymous authentication is disabled and on the authorization FTP user have read and write permission so let's close this and also close this one now let's go to the firewall so let me open once again and click on Windows firewall advanced setting inbound rule here you are going to find the rule for FTP as you can see over here FTP server traffic in and FTP server passive I have selected both of the rules as you can see over here the port number is 21 for FTP and the passive so let's select both of them once again ok and click on enable so we have enabled rule for the FTP on the firewall. So the firewall on the local server will not block us when we try to connect to the FTP server. Now let's go to our web server. So hold on for a moment. Okay, so once again, let's open network and sharing center, Ethernet, details. Here you can see the IP 192.168.1.102 and the gateway. 
click on close close this and also close this one now let's open now let's open internet explorer okay type down google hit enter and type down what is my ip okay and as you can see 59.177.177.199 now close this one now let's go to server manager okay click on tools internet information service click on the server node default website so if you don't know how to configure a default website you can check it out on the description I have given the link for that video so let's click on browse and voila as you can see the page has been opened automatically and if I copy this text onto the URL you will see tech.pk.com basically that font has been changed so let's close this and close this one too and now we are going to go on the firewall advanced setting inbound rule and here I'm going to enable the port 80 rule as you can see this is port 80 so let's click on enable and as you can see it is on green now so we have enabled port 80 so that anybody coming from port 80 will be able to access this website now close this so now we have checked all the three servers and configured the firewall appropriately now let's go to our client machine so just hold on for a moment okay so this machine is inside the company's local area network let's check it out the IP address for this system click on local area connection details and here you can see the IP address that is 192.168.1.122 okay close this one and now let's check it out what is the WAN IP address let's type down Google G W G E L. okay click enter type down what is my IP and there you can see 59.177.177.199 okay so now let's check it out all of the three services which we have configured first we are going to check the remote desktop connection locally that is the IP address of the local server that is 192.168.1.100 if you remember let's click on connect it is asking me for the password let me type it down okay click on remember my credentials and click ok now it is connecting to the server click yes and just hold on for a second there we go we have successfully connected to the server one which is a remote desktop server so let's close this okay let me log it off okay mm -hmm. okay now we are back on the client machine and now we are going to test the FTP connection let's open the FTP client now let's type down the FTP server IP address okay 192.168.1.101 and the FTP user that is actually an FTP user so let me type it down and the very secret password that we are going to tell you okay click on quick connect and there we have successfully connected to the FTP server so this is also working properly so now let's close this one first let us disconnect the FTP client from here okay and close this now we are going to check the web server so on the browser let's type 192.168.1.102 okay hit enter and as you can see we have successfully able to open the website let's close this so now we have checked all of the three server services which are working properly now we are going to forward the ports from our router to local servers so let's open the internet explorer once again and let me type down the IP address of the router which is actually a gateway that is 192.168.1.1 if you remember let's click enter 
let's type username and the password for the router so just hold on for a second okay I'm not going to show you the password of the router due to security reasons sorry about that okay so we have entered to the router and now let's click on advanced setup on the advanced setup click on NAT it enables LAN to use one set of IP addresses for internal traffic and second set of IP addresses for external traffic virtual server allows you to direct incoming traffic from the WAN side to the internal server with the private IP address on the LAN side so now let's click on add okay now click on custom services here I'm going to type our first server which is RDP so just hold on okay and now define here the local IP address of the server so whenever the request comes it goes to our local IP address which is in this case 192.168.1.100 and the port number we are going to type here that is double three eight nine that's the RDP port and just click on apply and save so as you can see the port number has been added on the router now let's add another port click on custom services here I'm going to type FTP server so just hold on okay and the IP address that is 192.168.1.100 101 and the port number for the FTP that is in our case 21 okay and now click on apply okay now it says since 21 is using on the broadband router it will be changed on to 2121 no problem let's click okay now as you can see over here FTP server port 21 is also added on to the router settings now we are going to add another port for our web server so once again custom services type web server web web server server okay and the IP address that is 192.168.102 in our case and the port number which is 80 the external port will be also 80 now click on apply it says since the port 80 is user on the broadband router this will be changed into 80 80 no problem click OK and there as you can see all three ports has been added on our router now all incoming connection with the matching port number will be forwarded to the internal computer with the matching port number so let's close this okay so let me bring up one more system which is not inside the company LAN okay so this machine is not inside the company's local area network now let's check it out what is the public IP address this machine is using so let's type Google G W G L E. okay enter and here type what is my IP uh, what is my IP okay hit enter and there as you can see it is and something something so this is something else than earlier so this is an external network not inside the company's local area network now we are going to open and test all of our three services which we have configured is working properly or not so on the run I'm going to type the remote desktop connection that is MSTSC so just hold on for a second let me type it on ok click enter and there as you can see the IP address which we need to connect that is 59.177.177.199 ok click connect and here you can see it is asking me for the password I'm going to enter the password and never going to tell you just hold on for a second click on remember my credentials and click on ok just hold on for a second click yes and now it is authenticating to the server which is inside our company LAN and we are connecting through the external network as you can see we have successfully logged on to the server which is inside our company so let's close this and as you can see the desktop so we have successfully connected to the remote desktop connection and now we are going to close the connection let me sign out okay we are back on the machine now let's check it out the FTP 
So let's open the free FTP software FileZilla. So let's type down the IP address for our FTP server. If you remember the IP, basically it is 59.177.177.119. So just hold on for a second. Okay. Now the FTP username, which is actually FTP. So let's type FTP user. And the very secret password, never going to tell you. Just hold on for a second. Let me type it down and click on quick connect. Now, as you can see, the authentication is going on and we have successfully connected to the FTP server. As you can see, the logs. You can see over here, directory listing successful. Let me move this little bit up and here you can see all the server content over here. Now, let's close this. First disconnect and then close. Now, the last one, which is our web server. So let's open Internet Explorer and I'm going to type the exactly same IP address which you know already that is 59.177.177.199 So just hold on for a second. Let me type it down. Okay and hit enter. And as you can see we have successfully able to open the website which is hosted on the web server inside the company land. You're probably thinking where did I got this page from? Below the video I have given the link so you can also download this free HTML page from over there. So this completes our tutorial of port forwarding. Hello friends, thanks for watching this video tutorial. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to receive an email update when we post a new video. Share it with your technical IT friends. If you are facing any technical problem or have any suggestions, post your comment here or you can catch me on Google Plus, Google Talk, Facebook, Twitter and Skype. This video tutorial is presented by Sachin Semi powered by tech.pdecrise.com and you are watching me on YouTube.